Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be doing something quite a bit different than usual. We're going to be trying to convert this Porter steam locomotive from Bachmann into a fireless cooker, as seen right here. Basically, uh, several months ago, this company right here, uh, Apogee Locomotive Works, sent me this kit. It's this uh, guy who's uh, actually trying to start up his own business uh, where he makes kind of more obscure models in HO scale. Uh, just kind of kits you can actually use to convert models which already exist. So he reached out to me and asked if I would have a look at his products. And uh, I said, yeah, I was willing to do that. So uh, he sent me uh, everything you see here. So uh, this video is not in any way sponsored by them, but they did send me all this stuff. So we're going to try it out and see if we can convert this engine into uh, this fireless cooker. I did uh, do an unboxing featuring this thing. And uh, a lot of people were saying these fireless cookers, I guess, back in the day were used... Uh, as kind of like industrial switchers for uh, like food processing plants because I guess they were very clean so they didn't uh, produce a lot of soot like a steam locomotive would so they were very very good uh, if you had a area where you know you didn't want soot and crap getting into. So yeah sort of an interesting history. Anyways why don't we have a go at putting this whole thing together. I don't really know what to expect but uh, I think it should make for an interesting project. Let's begin. We'll begin by unboxing the Bachmann Porter steam locomotive. Apparently this locomotive is DCC, so I do want to take it over to the track before we convert it over just to see how it runs and everything. I've never owned one like this from them, so uh, I'm sort of curious to have a look at it. Anyway, let's uh, take this thing out here. There it is. I actually uh, really like the look of the locomotive. Anyway, let's bring it over the track and see how it operates. I'll just test this thing out beforehand to see if it works at all. I heard it hum for a second there, so it's probably uh, already initialized with a uh, controller. And uh, that seems pretty good. Test out. I'm not sure if the uh, headlight on this works. Well, it does, but it's very dim. I'm going to be interested to see if the headlight in this thing incorporates into the uh, conversion in any way, or if it's a PC remove. Well, we know it works. Now let's get to actually converting it. If I remember correctly, the kit itself was pretty simple. Here it is. Just uh, a very uh, nice design. I don't think these things were terribly detailed locomotives in real life, so I think they've done a good job capturing everything, but I wouldn't really know. I'm not an expert on these types of locomotives. Apparently, installing this kit is very simple. I guess there's just one screw and you just remove the uh, old shell, so I'm going to be curious to see how that all happens. But before we go about doing that, I want to uh, paint it, because uh, obviously this is not how it would have looked in real life, so we're going to put a matte black on it. And I think that should make things uh, look a lot better. I just noticed that there was a little bit of damage here, which I'm going to quickly mend. It doesn't look like anything too severe. I don't re remember if it was already like this when I got it, or if uh, this is something that happened on my end. It's possible this box got uh, bumped or something while it was here, but uh, either way, we'll just quickly fix that. I uh, will be careful with this. It's possible this type of plastic is... Uh, sensitive at certain temperatures and the basement can get kind of cold so uh, yeah I'm gonna be very careful uh, putting this on the model so let's I'll just let that dry for a little while and then um, once it's cured then uh, we'll go about painting it this is not the best way to go about doing this but I'm just gonna try to get any excess there Now I'm going to try to paint the model here. I've just got a black mat, nothing too fancy right here. So I'm just going to Well, the paint dries, I think we'll try taking the locomotive apart. I haven't taken one of these apart before, so I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to go about doing this, but I'm going to start by removing this screw, and I suspect the top will just come right off. I don't know. 
Well, it seems all right. Maybe I need to remove this one too, I don't know. Or maybe I need to remove the coupler. Who knows, let's just keep removing screws until something happens. I have a feeling this is the one. I think there's some sort of a clip here, so I'm gonna try to see if we can remove those. I am very confused. Oh, this is quite interesting. I guess the LED doesn't uh, actually, you know, there are no wires going up here. So uh, converting this over, I think should be quite easy. Look at the size of the motor. Wow. Nothing. There must be quite the gear reduction on this model to uh, make this all work properly. Huh. Very interesting. Well, the paint's all finished drying and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's not flawless, but uh, you know, these engines I'm sure in real life didn't have a perfect coat of paint and it gives this thing kind of a rougher look, which is kind of what I was aiming for. Anyway, all we have to do now is try to figure out how this exactly attaches uh, onto all the rest of this. So I guess we'll just try to stick it on here. Really unsure as to how this is all gonna go. I think these holes right here are for the edges of the circuit board. So I guess we'll try to position it around there. I wonder if this board is supposed to be maybe moved up here for installation. I also question whether or not that little handrail should be removed or not. It just pulls right out, nothing too complicated. Not entirely sure if it's supposed to uh, sink in a little further. Yeah, I think it is. Well, so far that looks like a, a pretty nice fit. I guess we'll try putting the screws back in. I'm not entirely sure how the back holds on, but I, I couldn't figure it out on this model either. It kind of looked like it clipped into this part. So yeah, I don't, I don't know how this is all gonna go. The back seems to be hanging on. I didn't see anything for this screw to uh, go into. I'm gonna put it back. It's possible it's supposed to just hold something else on the model in. Yeah, maybe not so. I guess we'll just leave it out. But yeah, uh, here it is all together. And uh, so far, I, I really like the look. It's, it's not complicated, but uh, it looks nice and the installation was not that complicated. So yeah, why don't we bring this thing over to the track and test it out now, see how it uh, performs. I mean, obviously it's gonna run the same way as this thing did, but uh, now it's got a, a groovy new shell. All right, let's take this thing on a test run. Wow. So far that really does not look bad. Well, I, uh, I quite like it. It's a very kind of unusual looking shell, but I mean, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And you know, it wasn't hard to install. 
Uh, and I, I really like the uh, design because this particular engine, you know, there's no wires going up to the shell or everything, so installing this thing was very straightforward. The uh, only thing I've noticed so far, which is a little bit strange, is that, uh, of course, you've got that rear light. And I guess you could argue it's kind of like a cabin light, although uh, since the light is facing the wrong direction, that's the only thing that I kind of think is a little bit off, but uh, you could easily just cover that up or uh, unsolder the light, so not really uh, a big issue in any way. Well, folks, that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed uh, putting this whole thing together. You know, it was a very simple project. It's not the type of thing I think you would be burning many hours on putting together, but uh, there's something kind of nice to be said about that in its own right, you know, just something that's kind of straightforward. You know, all I had to do, as all of you guys saw, was just throw some paint on this thing and uh, install it. So yeah, very, very easy to do in my opinion. And uh, I also like the uh, drive which they chose. Uh, because it doesn't have any wires or anything connecting to it, you know, before I worked on this thing, I was really wondering if it was going to be tricky to uh, disconnect lights and things like that, but uh, it was really straightforward. I was also curious, too, if you ever wanted to convert it back to the original, how tricky that would be, but considering that there wasn't any wires connecting to the lights or anything like that, and just a couple screws and clips holding it on, I think it'd be very easy to do, which is a very nice feature. You know, it's not necessarily permanent if you don't want it to be, so that's all very nice. And uh, the model itself is just sort of, it's interesting, you know, it's unusual. It's not the kind of thing, you know, you just see every day. So it's nice that somebody's gone ahead and, and, and made something that you can't commonly find, but put it on a drive which I think would be pretty easy to come by. So yeah, uh, overall I like the kit. Anyway, before I finish off the video, I wanna thank Apogee Locomotive Works for sending this whole thing. It was generous of them, and as I said, I did enjoy putting the whole thing together. So thank you to them for that. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.